Hej og velkommen til Succes Veterinær Praksis Podcast nummer 63. Det her er den sidste i serien på 11, der handler om online markedsføring og digital markedsføring for dyrlæger. Hvis du ikke du har hørt dem i rækkefølge eller hørt de andre episoder, så kan det give god mening at gå tilbage og starte med nummer 53, der er med i Potter. Og han fortæller lidt om, hvad hele det her med digital marketing er for en størrelse. I dag har jeg snakket med en amerikansk ekspert, som nok er en af de eksperter i verden, der ved allermest om markedsføring for dyrlæger. Han vil hjælpe os med at forstå, hvordan vi får det her til at hænge sammen. Hvordan vi får folk til at gå fra slet ikke at kende os eller overhovedet overveje at bruge os som dyrlæge, til at de får tillid til os og så ender med at booke en aftale, booke en konsultation hos os. I det introducerer han et nyt begreb, et nyt begreb for os i hvert fald, i det at vi ikke har snakket om det i den her serie før. Det er det, der hedder en landingsside eller en landing page. Det kan måske virke sådan lidt uoverskueligt, når man i første omgang ikke er så meget på hjemmeside og Facebook og den slags. Jeg har lavet en lille grafik over på hjemmesiden i shownoterne til det her afsnit, så du kan se, hvordan det her det fungerer. Det er i virkeligheden en enkelt artikel på din hjemmeside, så det er ikke teknisk set nogen stor udfordring, men det kan gøre en meget stor forskel i forhold til, om folk de rent faktisk booker en konsultation hos dig eller ej, og om din markedsføring er effektiv eller ej. Vi snakker også om noget om sprogbruget på de her hjemmesider, og hvad sådan en, en artikel og en landingpage den skal indeholde. Shownoterne og grafikken finder du på sivp.dk-63. For at prøve at hjælpe dig med at få overblikket over det her, så du ved, at du bruger din tid intelligent og ikke spilder den på en hel masse unødvendig markedsføring, så har jeg prøvet at samle alle de ting, vi snakker om i en pdf, og den kan du også få i shownoterne til det her afsnit. Den bytter vi for en e-mail, og det er faktisk en af de strategier, som vi også snakker om her, det er at prøve at samle nogle kontaktoplysninger. Hele trade-offet er selvfølgelig, at du forhåbentlig får noget værdi ud af at give mig din e-mail, og så sender jeg dig forhåbentlig endnu mere værdi, som du øh, vil være glad for. Jeg har også nogle online kurser, som jeg prøver at sælge, og hvis du ikke synes om det, så kan du meget nemt melde dig fra igen. Sammen med den her e-bog får du også en liste med 50 helt konkrete idéer til, hvad du kan lave indhold omkring til din digitale markedsføring. Det finder du alt sammen over i shownoterne, som sagt på sivp.dk-63. Brandon, som jeg har snakket med her i dag, han har også en hjemmeside og en podcast. I podcasten, der går han virkelig i dybden med nogle af de her emner, så hvis du har brug for eller lyst til at nørde ned i det her, så kan jeg varmt anbefale hans podcast. Det er den eneste i verden, der virkelig går i detaljer på det her niveau med fokus på os dyrlæger. Han har også en guide over hos sig, og han har også en øh, idéliste til, hvad du kan lave indhold om. Den kan du også få over på hans hjemmeside, og der bytter du den selvfølgelig også for en e-mail. Den introducerer han til sidst i podcasten, men der ligger også links til den i shownoterne. Alt sammen er som sagt samlet på sivp.dk-63. Og så skal vi over til interviewet. Jeg har glædet mig meget, og jeg har fulgt hans podcast i mange år. Så jeg er jo en lille smule nervøs også her i starten af interviewet. Det kan du måske høre, men det er i hvert fald mig en stor glæde at have fået ham med. Velkommen til Brandon Brasiers. Hi Brandon, and welcome okay. to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. We've been talking for a long time, so it's great to finally connect with you. We're on such a different time time uh, zones here, so it's been difficult to reach each other yeah uh, it always boggles so, my thank mind. you yeah uh, thank you it always boggles my mind to talk to someone else in uh, in another time zone because this is yesterday evening where you're at when it's it's morning here and it's yesterday where you're at <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> no time travel yeah exactly <laughs> so, yeah. uh it, I know you very well because I'm, I follow your podcast and I'm listening to. I've been listening to every single episode uh, f- for the last couple of years where you've been uh, been, been at it. So I know uh, quite a lot about you, but uh, I think most of my listeners don't. So can you? Oh, yes. Are you definitely. are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Just, yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah, can you give a, a short introduction to yourself and tell us a little about uh, who you are? Sure. So, my name is Brandon Brashears, and uh, three and a half years ago, I started uh, the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, 
which is a digital marketing podcast. It's in English, so I've listened to your podcast too. I couldn't get very far because I couldn't understand any of it, but I'm sure it's great. Your audio quality is fantastic, so <laughs> there's good production. Thank you. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, so I started my podcast about three and a half years ago. Um, I initially got into the veterinary industry uh, because I had a friend who had a software company that created loyalty programs, and um, I helped him with the marketing for that. And um, it was really interesting to see in the United States that veterinary practices were so far behind other businesses as far as I, they didn't have internet connection or computers in their practices, and I couldn't believe it. And so I decided to start the podcast because I saw a huge need for digital marketing in in the industry. And so I really like the, the people that are attracted to the industry because um, – they're typically really kind and, and very caring people that are just trying to do the best that they can. And so I feel like we can make a huge difference if we use digital marketing to help reach more clients and really be a, an educated voice, you know, having veterinarians communicate directly with clients versus just having other people who may may not have any training. They're just talking out there. Yeah. So I, I think that that's why I got started. And um, since then, I've had a, a great time connecting with all kinds of people in the industry. So it's been it's been really fun. And, and I also f feel like uh, the digital marketing is a very good fit for Danish veterinarians. And th that's uh, the people I know the best. But uh, I think it's you know, veterinarians in general because we... We uh, a lot of us are in the profession to educate and to help, and that is uh, what I feel you should do with digital marketing. <laughs> anyway, so I think uh, I feel it's it's a good fit, but um, uh, and I know you talk a lot about uh, digital marketing in in your podcast. But can you um, tell us a little about uh, why you love it so much? Why is it uh, that especially digital marketing is so effective? Yeah, so I love digital marketing because I think that right now is one of the best opportunities for any small business owner. And that's who I really love working with, uh, small business owners who have these businesses. They employ lots of people. They have their family in it. And it's a, a really cool thing because they are very connected to the community. And um, they're not just a big faceless corporation that has employees. I'm not saying that those veterinarians that work for large corporations aren't great, but I love working with the smaller ones because they have the same tools that any of the Fortune 500 company, you know, have. They might not have graphic designers or, or programmers at their disposal, but if they wanted to get on Facebook, they would go into the same ad platform that huge corporations have. And so in previous times in history, if you wanted to get into advertising, you had to go through, you know, TV commercials or radio, and it was very costly and difficult for smaller businesses to get started. But now you can get started on Facebook or Instagram or wherever your clients are spending time. And it's it's very cool because you don't need a huge budget to be very, very effective, especially if you're local and you're engaging with the community. And so I think it's an amazing opportunity for practices to really grow their, their business and um, help more people around them. Mm. And it's so that's what, that's why I love it. It's an amazing opportunity right now. And it and it's scalable as well. So you don't have to if you have uh, if you want to buy uh, huge billboards, you you would have to uh, get a lot of uh, money up front. But uh, you can go into Facebook and just spend like ten uh, dollars and then get out again. You don't have to have a huge budget to get started. Yeah, you can. And the minimum is a dollar, and that's what's amazing. I've done real estate in the past as well, and so I would uh, do all kinds of really large scale ad buys for that real estate company. And um, so we would spend, you know, between thirty five and fifty thousand dollars a month to advertise in, in Los Angeles on one of the radio stations. And with that you would get like sixteen ad spots. And it was so you know, a typical business wouldn't be able to advertise on something like that where if you want to get on Facebook it's really, really simple and you can get on there and create an, an ad. And when I say ad, it doesn't necessarily have to be selling something you can also use that to educate people to segment your audience and all kinds of cool cool things that you can do with that 
So uh, in this podcast series, we, I've been talking. Uh, we've been talking about uh, all sorts of digital marketing and email and website and SEO and local search and uh, Facebook, obviously. So um, I was hoping you could give us uh, some good examples with the clients you've been working with, because you've obviously you have been working with uh, a ton of clients, and you must have seen <laughs> every corner of the the uh, the business from a marketing perspective. So. Um, I was hoping if you have some cases you can uh, you can show us or you can tell us about who with veterinarians who have uh, actually succeeded with some of these tactics. Sure. So um, there, there's a lot of different things that you can do with um, marketing and and specifically I think Facebook marketing and Instagram and. I think those two are the probably best opportunities for every veterinary practice right now um, because guaranteed your clients are spending time on those platforms and so you can reach them and especially with all of the advanced demographic data and all of the tools that are available for targeting those, it's it's a really, really good platform for a veterinary practice. Um, but with uh, some of the clients that I work with, um, it's been really interesting to see you know, uh, I've worked with um, the the practices that are, are performing the best. When if you wanted to just get started running ads, for example, on Facebook, and let's say you didn't have any presence whatsoever, if you had no content and you just decided to start from scratch tomorrow, and you went on Facebook, um, they've made a lot of changes so that if you're not posting content regularly, that's not reaching your desired audience, you're ad spend is going to be a lot more expensive. And so um, specifically, I I think the reason for this is the election in the United States. They um, had a lot of problems with Russian ad buyers. And so um, they actually sent a a lot of Facebook ad people to Washington to testify. And so um, it's not anymore where you can just be a faceless business or faceless Facebook page. You have to have a presence and um, have people engage with the page so that it'll give you some kind of context for their algorithms. And so um, what I've seen is that practices that are creating content, and it doesn't have to be written content necessarily, but pictures and videos of, of, of people in the practice, um, when they go to create an ad on Facebook for services or um, you know, different kinds of things, the ad cost per acquisition is about um, eight to 10 times less than if they didn't have that content. And so it's really, really beneficial to be creating content that is going to resonate with your desired audience. So it has to be about, you know, pets and um, education and all kinds of things and not just selling services only. So that's one thing that has been really, really interesting to see Um, and it really reinforces that content is only going to become more important because they really want you to be engaging with, with your audience. And another thing that, um, we've been working a lot with is creating specific landing pages for, um, the service that you're actually selling instead of just sending traffic to the website and then hoping that your clients will figure it out once they get there and figure out what they're looking for. If you remove all of those steps and, if you have, for example, grooming services, you send them to a landing page that talks about grooming services and has a very specific grooming offer. Or if it's going to be about dental or, you know, general, um, maybe just a, an exam or, or something, it needs to be very, very specific. For so sure. You actually have a, a single page on your website that you want people to land on. That's why it's called a, a landing page. Correct. Yep. So... Th- Yep, it just has one specific objective, and that's to get the contact information. And so um, with digital marketing, it's important that you integrate it with your practice systems and make sure that you are having somebody at the front receptionist or something call and confirm to set appointments and follow up on phone and things. Because if you just expect people to take action and then do everything on their own, things happen, and so they get busy and you know, it's important to to have that follow up in place as well. So connect your kind of traditional marketing with your digital marketing. It's important. So, so you would actually, um, uh, instead of having an, an online booking system, you would actually have uh, the receptionist call people up if you have the phone number. 
So actually, I suggest that um, the clients that I work with do both. So I really like the online booking because then we can book an appointment, especially after hours, um, because Facebook is open all the time. And so you're not going to be have somebody there unless you're a 24 hour practice, which then you're probably doing emergency services. And it's probably a very different kind of thing. They probably don't want to book it. They want to come in. So um, making sure that, you know, the, the booking service works, but at the same time, have somebody do a follow up call. And it just is a good personal touch. So um, digital marketing, I think, really kind of reflects um, how people engage on a normal basis as far as how you build relationships with people. It's not just, you know, you're, again, you're not just a faceless company, you're going to build a relationship with that person. So what are kind of the steps to come from, you know, becoming a, a, a friend from when you were a stranger? So how do you get between those two points? And so that's what digital marketing really does, I think. Definitely. So it, uh, what do people do uh, on Facebook and landing pages to, to actually have, uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, someone to call and, and someone who actually sure. makes an appointment? So Facebook is very different than like a search engine, for example. Um, when you have somebody that's out there actively searching, then you're you don't have to work as hard to convert that person. But if somebody's on Facebook or Instagram, they're not searching for a veterinary practice. Um, you know, they might have a dog that's sick at home or a dog that needs dental work or something. And so unless you put an ad out there that says, hey, we are running a special offer or, um, you know, we have these special services or something, you have to present some kind of an offer that is going to resonate with your client. And so um, a lot of times people, when I, when I start working with them, they'll say, well, we just want them to come in. We don't want to, we don't want to offer a special or discount. We just want them to come in at full price. And I say, I totally understand that, but there has to be a reason why they're going to come in for that first visit. And so I totally don't like doing discounting because I think it, it's not um, something that you should use and, and rely on. Cause if you continue to discount and that's the only reason why people are coming in, then somebody else can offer a lower price. And then it becomes a race to the bottom, which is not a good thing for practice. And so, um, But getting them in for the first time, so the way that I typically word it is that I, I write an offer, um, and it depends on what the practice is willing to give. But the more that they're willing to give, the less it costs to get that new client. It's a, You don't have to spend as much in ad ad spend to get that client, because obviously a more valuable offer, more people will, will take it. Um, but we, we get, get some kind of an offer that's going to resonate with the specific audience. So maybe a free exam for first client, um, maybe a $25 service voucher, which they can redeem at, towards any services or something that is going to be of benefit and value to that person. And then we create an ad that says, we'd like to earn your business. Please let us prove to you that we will take great care of your pet and we're going to do a great job for you. So we'll turn you into a customer for life. Come and try us out. And that's basically what the ad says. And then it goes to a landing page, which Again, has that benefit statement right at the top. It um, what a lot of times what people do is when they when they go create an ad about a practice, and then if they're trying to convert somebody who doesn't know about them, they just start talking about themselves, and so that always pretty much fails. Yeah. So um, I had a, a a client who actually I I gave her this template and I said, hey, this is the template. You just need to use it. I've tested it a bunch of times it's gonna work great and so she took it and she wrote it about her practice and so again when you have somebody who doesn't know about you they really care about what's in it for them they don't necessarily care that oh you know hey you've been working for 20 25 years in the community that's great but what can you do for me is what they're really more interested in so um, making sure that the the ad and the landing page is written as far as benefit to the person. And so there's a few things that they think about when they come there. They think to themselves, you know, is this offer going to give me benefit? Are these people for real? And are they going to treat my pet well? And so, and then another thing that they typically think about is where are they located? And so on the landing page, I kind of address all of those potential objections. Um, and so we'll typically go into the benefit statement, give an opt-in, then we'll, so we try and convert them If they don't convert, we'll put below that, there'll be like an, a map and hours so people can say, oh, yeah, it's convenient to come in. It's not too far away. 
and I can come in at these certain times. And then below that, put um, client reviews, positive client reviews. And that way they kind of have all of their questions answered and they feel comfortable to give their contact information. And then once they give their contact information, it then takes them to the booking. So that way we capture the information. That way, if they don't complete the booking, we can still call them up the next day or right as soon as possible and say, hey, we saw that you took this offer. And we always say that the offer is good only for 14 days or a limited time. That way it gives them urgency to, to come in. And so all of those different things together help to um, convert those people into the people that you call. So that's actually... So yeah. that's... Yeah, oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, so uh, there's two things in this I'd, I'd like to uh, dive a little more into because... Uh, um, Maybe we should sum up uh, what's on the landing page. But first, I'd like to to address that um, when you uh, when we're talking about creating an an offer or uh, creating uh, an ad on Facebook or maybe even marketing in general, I think the first uh, thought that pops into to a lot of veterinarians' minds is a discount. So that's uh, discounts are the only way of creating an offer. It's, it's the only way of creating effective marketing is discounting prices. Not necessarily. You could do value add. So, you know, come in for grooming and we will give you a bonus. So maybe like a, um, you know, some kind of an offer, especially if you can get reps to give product that you could then give on top of it. That way you're not discounting, you're just giving a, a bonus. So you're adding value instead of detracting that value. Um, you could do things like nail trims, um, which doesn't, you know, add a nail trim for free additionally with that grooming or, um, you know, uh, package deals, um, additional service, additional information, any, any way that you can different, differentiate yourself. Um, and then another thing, too, is if you have either products or services that nobody else has in the area, then that differentiates you and it provides enough value that they want, would want to come in. So if you have specialty treatment, um, you know, I, I work with a, a veterinary neurologist and he's got MRI machines um, at every one of his locations. He's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so he doesn't, he's very, very expensive. <laughs> and so um, he doesn't have to discount because he is an amazing brain surgeon and people understand, okay, yeah, we're getting an MRI and then going into brain surgery and or spinal surgery. But he, he's, uh, uh, he's also devaluating his uh, expert status if he, he starts discounting. So Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't discount, but so he sets himself apart. So you can set yourself apart. And that way you're, you're the only, then the way that you would set yourself apart is through content. And so if we're working on, it's either cold traffic or warm traffic. So warm traffic are people who know you, cold traffic are people who don't know you. And so the way to get people to know you is to get content out there, get your face out there and, and get people to know you. Yeah. So, um, and so we, um, we send people to this landing page that, that we create. Uh, and then you talk about benefits, and that benefit is not that I have 20 years of experience. What is it then? What is the benefit then? Sure. So 20 years of experience could absolutely be a benefit, but if um, convenience uh, is a benefit, think about all of the pain points that your clients have, and how can you address those pain points? So um, do you have appointments that are on time? I, in the United States, I don't know if it's the same over there, but veterinarians are notorious for, you know, you set an appointment and then an hour and a half or two hours later, they see you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, emergencies happen. But I can't tell you how frustrating that is, especially if you ha are busy, right? If you're on time every time and you had, you know, great service, that would be very valuable to people. People pay to get time, you know. And so um, the time is valuable to people. So that's one thing that you could do. Um, but uh, figuring out what your client's pain points are and then how you're going to address them, those are the benefits that they're going to be interested in. Yeah. So, so we actually need to talk about their pain points and not uh, how I'm, uh, I, how I spent the last twenty years getting all that uh, experience. Sure. 
So if it's like if I told you about my podcast and I said, hey, my podcast is amazing because I've had five years of experience in digital marketing and I've spent $100,000 in the last year in in ads and I've, you know, that doesn't help, right? If I say, hey, my podcast is great because I teach you how to generate new clients. I teach you how to do digital marketing, right? There's a difference there. The focus is not on me. It's on my potential audience that I'm trying to reach. And so that's what you need to think about. Um, I think you mentioned you done you you've done client avatars in past episodes here, yeah. and so really defining your client, what are they looking for, and how are you going to address those issues? That's how you create that benefit statement for yeah. them. Yes, yeah, so I see a lot of veterinarians, for example, right on the website that they have all these courses and and uh, um, CPDs on uh, skin disease, and they write all uh, all have a long list of all the courses they have taken in skin disease. Instead of maybe uh, you should write, uh, we know your dog is itching and we know it's difficult to find out why, but I promise you I will hold your hand until we get the hang of it or something. That sure. is more a benefit In- than, than actually uh, uh, all, the, exactly. all the long lists. Exactly. So if you, you could say, um, you know, we're skin experts and we can help your dog stop its itchy skin no matter what its condition. We have all kinds of treatments just special for your pet and that's a better statement versus i've taken 20 courses i think adding that credibility on is important right so people justify their emotional decisions with logic typically and so that is something that would help them justify that decision but i don't think that's what you should lead with for sure so yeah. that that is uh, something that uh, that you see people actually do that is uh, is creating results for them is is changing the language Absolutely. So with that one client that uh, that I told you about, she took my template, she changed it completely. I changed it back. So she ran uh, she ran two hundred dollars worth of ads for it, and she got hundreds of clicks and zero conversions. I changed it back. I ran five dollar ads, and I got two new clients for her <laughs> the first day. And she said, "What did you do?" And I showed her, and she said, "Well, what's different? I can't tell." And I just changed it so that it was a benefit statement versus. Uh, this is how good we are. And so that really helped. And one thing that I see people do too is they make it so complicated um, where the headline that she wrote, it was basically like, you know, we're so good, get this as a benefit. And then it said, but you can only use it for this, 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 right? Uh And so somebody would read it and say, oh, that seems complicated. I I can't do that. And so I, I added all of those terms and conditions to the subheadline. So it was still very prominent and very easily, you know, this easy to see and, and easy to understand what the offer was. But it's like if you said to me, like, hey, let's let's do a podcast, but I can only really have you on the podcast maybe the third Monday of next month or the, the fifth Saturday of the year. And I'd be like, what? I, I don't know what that means. You're making it hard on me. So figure out how to make it easy for somebody to say yes. That's something that I'd be interested in. And th- that really, really helps. So th- that's kind of funny, but it, it seems simple, but people like to complicate it and put all of that up there. Make it as simple as possible for people to say yes. And um, they, they will say yes more often. But I think we worry a little bit uh, if um, if we write something on Facebook, then you can just call us, and people will just uh, be calling from all over the country and never even visit us, and or never even consider visiting us. Uh, so, and if we create an offer, we will actually people will storm to the clinic, and then we won't uh, have any real work. So, <clears throat> I've seen this. Um, uh, the lists in Danish as well, where people are writing, and uh, there's a free phone consultations uh, also. And if it goes over twelve twelve minutes, we will actually we will charge this and this and this, and they have all these huge lists on on what it what <laughs> they can and they cannot do. Um, mm-hmm. So I've I've seen uh, uh, people creating obstacles for themselves uh, just from the beginning, also in Danish. <laughs> I've seen those, yeah. People are so hesitant to create content and offers because they think it's going to be so overwhelming. (laughs) But in reality, it just kind of goes unnoticed. The internet is so crowded and there's so much, so many people advertising that you're not, you're not likely not going to be overwhelmed. And if you are, you should probably start a marketing agency (laughs) because you're really good at it. And um, if you can generate 
you know, n- new business, then that's a good problem to have, I think. But yeah, I, I would say make sure that your offers are, are valuable and that you're trying to connect. Since you're advertising, like you said, those those telephone consultations, um, I don't know if those are tremendously popular, but that sounds kind of like a hassle. I would rather have them come into the practice. Yeah. And so if you're spending money, define who your ideal client is and actually go after your ideal client instead of, you know, trying to take the lowest denominator, so to speak, of, you know, okay, we'll get somebody who will just pick up the phone and call instead of somebody who'll come in. Yeah. And so create content and offers that will appeal to people who really love to to come in and take care of their pets and are, are the kind of clients that you love to work with instead of going after clients that you are a headache for you. Because yeah. if, if you're advertising, you get to choose. Yeah, and, and you have to choose because you have to segment who you're running your ads to. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I sort Definitely. of have mixed feelings on these uh, phone consultations because, of course, we have uh, some of the clients have uh, have animals we have seen and I like to follow up and just make sure that they feel uh, taken care of. Uh, and sometimes people just... Uh, call to ask a simple question and we can actually convert them into clients and i have um i have more than one example of of people i've I spent 10 15 minutes on the phone with and they actually convert into clients from that so i know that it, it can be a return there can be a, a good return on investment but it's a very hard calculation to to make to see if it's actually worth my time i don't know that's I would be hard to say, and I I think that uh, vets in the United States are very much against that, uh, just because they they can't you know um, give proper assessment of the animal over the phone, and so they just kind of I think uh, a lot of people believe that the vets don't want to answer questions over the phone, but really they can't because they can't do a proper assessment. So I think that's why they just don't like doing doing that, but. If it if it makes return on investment for you, I think that mostly vets should be focusing on seeing seeing patients, which is what they went went to school for, and um, you know building systems as much as possible to create new clients for them, but not be so involved in the in the closing, so to speak, of you know the selling and sales part of it. I don't know if you have this in the United States, but probably you do. But uh, sometimes we have uh, people uh, calling in and say, my dog is vomiting and have diarrhea and I have, uh, have had that for four days and now it's uh, completely flat on the floor. And the the nurse or the uh, the rep will uh, will try to tell them to come in to book an appointment. We need, the, the vet needs to see your dog. And they can talk for uh, to people for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, end up giving me the phone and I say, okay, he sounds sick. You, maybe you should book, book an appointment. And it takes like 20 seconds to say that. And people say, okay, <laughs> I'll come in. And then I give the phone back to the rep so she can book the appointment. It's it's ridiculous. But sometimes people would just have the vet saying that and don't they don't trust the nurses. Sure. That's ridiculous, of course, but that's something. <laughs> that's, that. I don't know. There, that might be true. He might be human nature, but at least that uh, that rep seems to have uh, primed it for you so that you, you can close it quickly and say, "Come in. What are you doing?" Yeah. So, <laughs> the, the yeah, I've, is certainly I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my my dog is turning blue and it's not breathing. Should I come in? Like, yeah. Probably, unless you want him to die. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they can discuss this for hours on end. Uh, yeah. until the, the meat of it no well um anyways so uh creating it uh, or making it easy is what you said uh, you, you try to to change the text a little uh, or the template a little so uh, so you made it easy on the client so sure uh, uh, altering the make it e- yeah so making it easy too as far as how how they can book the appointment because some people like to talk on the phone like you were just talking about your 15 to 20 minute people who like to talk on the phone or some people don't like to talk on the phone so having a book online is is better and giving them those different options for for booking is really really helpful um then so then on the confirmation page i'll put so first off you have to have your landing page and then you have to have confirmation page and so on the confirmation page Again, you have to clearly explain and set up the expectations so that they understand they're going to receive a phone call from one of the receptionists to confirm the appointment. 
they're going to um, be able to redeem it within this time period. And then here's the map of how to get to the practice. Here's the phone number. Here's the email. Here's the website. And here's how you book the appointment. And so really give them all kinds of options. And then also follow up with email because, again, life happens and, and people get busy. So making sure that you have as many contact points as possible and give it as many kind of options so that it's it's very, very simple to, to book for them. So we are actually uh, creating a little more work for ourselves here. So we have to to be more aware of uh, more channels. So we have Facebook and email and and phone and and everything. But as a business owner or as a busy vet, we will actually have to uh, uh, to take some of that work on ourselves to to make it easy on the client to book a time. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and that's kind of the way that people. If you have an appointment or you book an appointment and if you're trying to look up the address or, you know, it's easy to go through your email and search for the animal hospital name. And then if you have in all of the emails that I send out, make sure that the phone numbers are clickable so you can add just a little piece of code to make sure that when they click the phone number, it'll make it pop up on their, their phone automatically so that they don't have to switch between their email and their phone and dial it because that's a headache. So make it easy. And um, when they have a, a direction link in the email to you, if you, when they click it, instead of having to copy and paste the address, it just opens in Google Maps. And so you can get those embeddable links from Google Maps for free. So just doing little tricks like that to make it simple instead of um, adding extra steps. It just helps with convenience and increases your conversion. So every time you make it easier for the, the person to, to take action, the higher your conversion rate is going to be. And so anytime you can increase your conversion rate, the return on investment for ad spend dramatically goes up. So maybe Across. you should actually ask a, a friend uh, that is not a veterinarian uh, to try to book an appointment and see how, how well it, it goes for them or just uh, look over the shoulder to see how easy it is for them to... To actually book yeah, that would be good. Yes, yeah. yeah, so see what their process is. Say, hey, try and book an appointment at my practice. Let's say your dog is sick right now and you want to come in. Then see how they do it. And if there's no good way to do it, then figure out a system for it. Yeah. So uh, you started off by uh, saying that, that we should be present on Facebook. Uh, and, and this is obviously uh, a lot of Facebook ads because you can segment them and, and target very precisely. But um, we have also talked about email and video and a lot of all the other channels. Will this work for other channels is, or is it just Facebook? No, it'll it'll work for all the channels. I think it's important to spend the majority of your time creating content um, in places where your clients are spending time. So if you're creating video, make sure that you're posting it across all of your channels. Um, so adding it to Instagram, because you can do a 60 second Instagram video, um, putting it on YouTube as well. I think YouTube is, is a great tool. Um, it's a little bit difficult for small businesses to reach large audiences without spending money on YouTube. Um, and I do uh, YouTube optimization for some pretty large size YouTube channels, but until you get to a certain point, it's just difficult to show up in search results and things like that. Um, and so, um, I would say really spend time on channels where your clients are, are spending time. You can e easily reach them. Um, and so Facebook is right now it's, it's amazing. I think what makes Facebook and Instagram so appealing is that their ad platforms are just so easy to use and you have such pinpoint targeting that you can really target the right people and the right demographics. Um, they are changing this all the time. And so it is a little bit frustrating. And uh, this year in 2018, they've announced that there's some pretty big changes to their ad platforms and their APIs. And they're going to be taking away some of the data that we've had access to in the past, um, specifically audience numbers um, and how many people are inside of an audience. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, there may be some changes here um, in the future that make Facebook a little bit more difficult. And so if you can do everything you can right now to build that audience so that at least you know, okay, we have my Facebook page and I can always uh, target people who like my page and, and spend money to, to reach those people, 
I think that it's it's pretty important to build up that audience because it's going to be valuable for you. But you can also use things like emails um, and put your email addresses into pretty much any paid ad platform and and market towards those people. Those are creating custom audiences, and um, so it, it all really overlaps. And there's just a lot of multiple uses for all of your your marketing assets. Yeah. I think, and so anytime that you can take you know, one, one asset and then use it in different places that really helps your save time and, and increases return on investment for things as well. So you can actually diversify if you have the time and the, uh, you feel the, the some, card, some kind of crazy need to, to spend a lot of time on this. You can you can actually diversify and maybe that's also a good idea to, to have some on email and have some video if Facebook decides to take even more away, you, you would actually have something to to market towards still absolutely um so facebook and other channels like social networks that you don't pay for the end so facebook's customer is advertisers and so because that's the case and the users are the product they can change the rule at any time and so really you're not you don't own your facebook page you're just basically renting that that medium and so um, having media that you own, so that it's like email addresses, phone numbers, contact information that you can send out at any time that other platforms can't throttle or control who gets to see it, really that content can stand on its own. And it's important to have media that you own as well. So, because um, things happen all the time, you know, Twitter is becoming less and less effective, I think, in, as a marketing platform. Um, there will become a, a time when Facebook becomes expensive to reach people. And so if you can convert your likes and your fans into email addresses and actual clients who are coming in, it's going to be very beneficial for you. So try and get as much contact information as you can. So obviously when people are coming in the practice, make sure that you're collecting emails, everybody who walks in the door, give them, give them a reason to get, get their email address. Yeah. We uh, some of the the system practice management systems we have can uh, email people the the receipt after the visit, and you can also email a copy of your report um, or a, a client data or maybe uh, sorry a patient data or maybe uh, blood work if you want to do that. So that can be an incentive for people to to leave the email with you. That's a good. That's a really good incentive. I'm sure that if you said you know. Can we can we gather your email address so that we can send you? So if you if you give people a reason again, say can we get this so that we can give you a benefit? That'll help to increase your conversion yeah. in in practice, yeah. definitely. So uh, one last question: You talk a lot about content, and I you know you have a, a list or an opt-in for uh, with content, but where and you have touched about uh, touched upon this uh, a little bit with the pain points. But uh, where can where would we find ideas for content? What should we actually write? What should we take pictures of? What should we create videos or Facebook ads around? Sure. So. Um, I do have an opt-in if you text the word uh, veterinary. Oh, well, actually, that's only U.S. So if you go to veterinarymarketingpodcast.com, uh, you can sign up for my, it's a 31 veterinary marketing blog ideas. Uh, and so it just is content ideas on ways to create content pretty quickly. Um, it's more of a framework. It's not really ideas. So, for example, it's like create a list post or, um, you know, the top five problems um cat owners face or you know any kind of just framework to create content quickly um it's it's beneficial for practices um especially if you have multiple people in the practice who can contribute and give ideas it's it's really really helpful but the content that you create is needs to be a, a way to segment your your people that you're going to be putting the content out to so um for example, if you wanted to create, if you had offers and you wanted to get more cat owners in your practice, which is a problem for people in the United States, a lot of the cat owners don't bring their cats in regularly. Um, creating awareness pieces to help them get awareness about problems and health problems that they can. So, you know, five things that you, five reasons why you need to bring your cat in every year to see the vet um, and explain how even if they're indoor cats, 
there's problems that indoor cats can have because probably a lot of people think, oh, my cat's never going outside. It doesn't need to have preventative and, you know, all, all these different things. So educating people um, with the content. So that can be through video or through written blog posts or written posts on Facebook or you know, infographics or different things like that. Um, and really that content will serve to figure out who's interested in it so that you can then give an offer to that specific segment. So the more specific that you can be with your, your content and the more specific offers you can create, the happier people will be because you'll only be showing them things that they're interested in instead of you know, showing cat owners stuff about dogs or you know, the other way around. Yeah. So, so uh, I see a lot of veterinarians have um, articles, blog posts on uh, intestinal parasites and fleas maybe. Um, and then that is something they could find uh, on both dogs and cats, but there are differences. Uh, so you would actually advise us to, to make one piece for cats and one piece for dogs so that the people would segment themselves. Yeah, so um, a lot of the email softwares that you can send out You, you can have rule-based um, logic set up so that if they click on a link, it can then tag them as somebody. And so you can create segments in your list that way. Or you can post content on Facebook, and then if they click on that, you can pixel them and then remark it to them in the future. So um, I would say that flea treatment is pretty, as long as you're doing a flea offer that works for both, Um, that would be okay. I think it's okay to be general when it's okay, but the more specific that you can be, the better. Because again, you're going to be sending them relevant offers, and the more relevant you are, the the more it seems like you're paying attention to them and you know what they want. Yeah. So if you have a Facebook ad or maybe a link in your email, and if uh, and you write, if you uh, are interested in fleas on cats, click this link. Or if you are interested in dogs, uh, with fleas on dogs, you click this link. And you know that people who click the one link have uh, probably have a dog and the other link probably have a cat. Uh, yep. So you can use that information in your marketing later on. Definitely. And so it's just good to collect information on that kind of stuff for sure so that you have it and have access to it. Yeah, but that that is something uh, it t- that ties back into the content that you actually you want to uh, to have in mind when you're creating content that you can actually, you want to segment into the pain points of the specific audience. Yep, absolutely. Good. We could actually, we could talk for hours on this and you, your podcast is well over a hundred episodes. So you haven't, you have been talking for hours on, on this. So if uh, people would like to hear more from you, uh, where is the best place to go? Can you please uh, tell us about your podcast and your website? And sure. Is, uh, so relevant? you can go to Facebook and you can search for veterinary marketing podcast. Um, and you You'll see my Veterinary Marketing Podcast Facebook page. You can also subscribe in iTunes or Google Play, uh, as well as Stitcher and other podcast players. Um, if you search for the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, and uh, you can just have um, 122 episodes now, and so a lot of different topics. If you're interested in digital marketing, um, I'm happy to answer questions too. So if you ever have questions. Kind of the best way to reach me is go to Facebook and send me a message on Facebook Messenger. Um, and I see those because my email inbox is pretty pretty full. So yeah. um, it's not, not too busy there. So that's a good place to reach me if you have any questions for sure. But I would um, be happy to help or answer any questions if anybody has any. Well, thank you very much, Brendan. It's it's been uh, uh, it's been really good. This it, it's a, a lot of uh, good insights and uh, hopefully a lot of good ideas for people. Thank you very much for having me. I really really appreciate it, and I'm definitely going to have to have you on on my podcast here, and very soon. <laughs> Jeg har tre ting til dig. For det første, så find Brandons podcast, enten i iTunes eller hvor du nu lytter til podcast. Der er virkelig meget godt at hente netop der, hvor han går i rigtig mange detaljer, hvor du kan lære meget. Og det kan flytte dig væk fra konkurrenterne og sørge for at give dig en konkurrencefordel. Og det kan også hjælpe dig til at tage samtalen lidt væk fra altid og handle om pris. 
For det andet, så kig i shownoterne på hjemmesiden sivp.dk-63 til det her afsnit. Der er nemlig lidt overblik over det, vi har snakket om i dag, og der er lidt uh, download gået... Ja, jeg skulle til at sige gået videre, det vil jeg nu alligevel ikke. Få overblikket på sivp.dk-63. For det tredje, så er det her med at lave en landingsside, det er noget, du forholdsvis nemt, vil jeg tro, kan udføre. Også selvom at du ikke er chefen eller lederen i butikken. Hvis du tænker over, hvilken person du helst vil have konsultationer med, bare dig helt privat, uanset om du ejer klinikken eller ej. Og du tænker over, hvilke typer opgaver du bedst kan lide at lave. Kun igen dig. Hvis du kan lave en hjemmeside, hvis du kan lave en side til hjemmesiden, så kan du måske hive nogle flere af de her klienter ind. Jeg kan ikke forestille mig, at der er mange chefer, der ligesom vil være træt af, at du hiver noget ekstra ind, og udover at din arbejdstid, og det kan du måske putte ind i en stille dag, hvor der ikke er nogen, der opdager det alligevel, så er det her fuldstændig gratis at lave. Det at lave en landingsside, eller det at lave en artikel til hjemmesiden, er Udover, som sagt, tiden er fuldstændig gratis. Derfra kan du lave et Facebook-opslag, der linker til netop den her side. Og det behøver ikke i første omgang at være en annonce. Du kan lave et Facebook-opslag med den formulering, Brandon han sagde i podcasten her. Hvis ikke du kan huske den, så lægger den også på hjemmesiden sivp.dk-63. Lav et opslag, der linker til den her side, du har lavet. Og så skal du måske lige fortælle sygeplejersken, der plejer at tage telefonen, at du har lavet det her nummer, sådan at hun ved, at der kan være nogen, der ringer på baggrund af den og får en aftale. Når du har lavet det nummer, så kan du vise til chefen, at du rent faktisk kan hive klienter ind i klinikken, også selvom det måske i første omgang kun er én. Og derfra kan du så arbejde videre med alt det, vi har snakket om her med e-mail og måske Instagram og YouTube og meget af alt det andet gode sager. Men jeg vil anbefale dig at starte simpelt. Punkt 1. Tænk over, hvem du gerne vil tale til, en person eller et emne, som du gerne vil målrette dig imod. Lav en, hjemmeside, lav en landingsside på hjemmesiden med lidt tekst om, hvad det er, øh, folk får ud af at få en konsultation hos dig. Og så sørg for at lave en Facebook-opslag, der linker til det. Se, hvor det bærer hen. Hvis du laver en god landingsside, så kan du også få gavn af at få et link. Så fortæl også gerne mig om det. Så laver jeg et link til dig fra min hjemmeside, og det vil Google synes godt om. Og på den måde vil det også give dig et boost der. Så sørg for også lige at fortælle mig om det. Så kan det også være, at jeg skal dele dit Facebook-opslag. Jeg håber, du har fået rigtig meget ud af den her serie om online markedsføring. Og nu hvor året er ved at være slut, så tager vi lige at drosle lidt ned og tager en personlig historie her til nytår. Og fra næste år, så skal vi snakke lidt om det, der kan hjælpe dyrlægestuderende med at komme i gang. Og vi skal snakke lidt om uddannelse og om LinkedIn og personlig branding og den slags. Og så graver vi os ned i nogle faglige emner derfra i slutningen af januar og starten af februar, hvor vi skal snakke lidt mere om endokrine lidelser, og så bliver der noget om neurologi. Og så håber jeg virkelig, at du får gode resultater retur på den investering i tid, du har lavet på at lytte til de her podcast. Tak for i dag.